Welcome to uh, SIE Intech uh, webinar series. This is the third uh, webinar series. And uh, if you stay with us today, uh, you will uh, learn about the uh, fundamental of the CTO PCI with the uh, expert from uh, Japan and, uh, and uh, panelists from uh, Thailand and uh, Malaysia. Uh, in the first and the second part of the series, we talk about the the uh, PCI uh, CTO PCI tool, including a uh, guide wire and uh, micro catheter and uh, guiding catheter. And we had uh, Doctor Nakamasu uh, from Japan and Doctor Kinochita from Japan as our guest lecture. And today. We are very happy to have Dr. Shikeru Nakamura from Kyoto Kasura Hospital as our guest uh, lecturer. So, uh, and let me introduce our, our panelists uh, briefly. So, today we have Dr. Wasan Utai Shalom from uh, Juralongkorn Hospital as our uh, panelist and uh, I think uh, he needs no uh, introduction. He is uh, the CTO master uh, in Thailand, and he will give us the uh, comment or his uh, point of view for us today. <laughs> and also, we, we will have a case presentation from Dr. Anne Kanoksin and, uh, and Dr. Asli Langa Abdullah from Malaysia. Dr. Kristani Muk from Lama Tibedi Hospital and Dr. Vilas Keha Sucharan from uh, Central Chess Hospital. So after each lecture, uh, we, we can have a short Q&A and uh, later we will have a Q&A again at the end of the con conference. So uh, for the attendee, you can chat or ask uh, your question using the, the chat, chat box. And I will pick up your your question for Q and A. And uh, please uh, don't share your screen and uh, don't uh, open your microphone. Uh, so let me uh, start. So the first lecture is the topic of step by step approach to CTO uh, lesion by Dr. Shikeru Nakamura. Dr. Shikeru Nakamura is from Kyoto Kasura Hospital. He is the very uh, Japanese expert in this field. So please, Dr. Nakamura. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Pat uh, So also, the, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, meeting. So uh, I'm going to uh, show you some slides. Just moment. This computer is no good, so it takes time. <laughs> okay, uh, can you see the slides? Yes. Okay, uh, so the step-by-step -step approach to the CTO. So CTO procedure is advancing the wire to the unknown route and uh, that way the approach is also not easy to access to the small complex channel. So last year I had a very complicated case and I would like to share this case with you. The case of a 57 year old male, the patient was treated by cassette ablation due to non-sustained VT from RV free wall. CAG revealed RCS CTO and ischemia was proved by RS scintigraphy. 
The patient had no symptom, but his father got sudden death. He wanted to be treated for the RCSCT lesion. His coronary risk factor is hypertension and hyperlipidemia, and normal ejection fraction is 65%. So this is a bilateral injection, uh, one from uh, radial and one from femoral. So this is Hyperion uh, SPB. So collateral from the circumflex to distal RCA. I hope uh, you can see this image. This is audio view. That would be good collateral from circumflex to distal RCA. But this is a freeze frame. Okay, the entrance of the uh, uh, CTO may be here. The collateral channel from the circumflex. And when you check the audio view, there's a large RV branch, and then the uh, distal end is like here, and there's some branch here. So maybe about uh, 30, 40 millimeter CTO length. So uh, this is the proximate cap ambiguity. So uh, when we through this flow chart, IVAS guided entry is required. Okay, this is IVAS marking. This is aerial view. This is the aerial view. This is Terumo system. So uh, by the IVAS, the entrance of the CTO is not so calcified that's literally severe uh, fibrotic here. So I started with UB3 uh, because this is unknown route, so I don't want to use the, uh, like a Gaia or a Conquest, the not, not sharp tip, uh, just for the standard ball tip uh, guiding. And also the uh, very torturous, I use the UB3 as some uh, slip coat. This is Sion wire. And I penetrate this uh, CTO part just a little bit and recheck the IVAS again. So IVAS shows wire went into the uh, CTO vessel. So uh, the supporting catheter is a Corsair and this is UV3, and gently rotating because of unknown route. This is ARIO uh, 15, Cryo 30. This is LAO. And advanced in the UV3 about like uh, 20 millimeter. So I could not move the wire well because I had resistance. Also, uh, direction is unknown. I can do only just for the rotating. So if I have a lucky, I can go, but uh, I have resistance. I stop advancing the anti with wire at this point. So the distal uh, vessel code is poor, but I, anyway, I did not advance the wire anti and Intervention of collateral present, yes. So the retrograde approach. So the problem with the retrograde approach is very tortuous and there's a loop in the channel. Channel size looks about more than 1.5 millimeter. So crossable channel, but the problem is the tortuosity. Also when you check the area of view, it's very, very tortuous, and there's a loop at the distal part. But uh, I started with Sion wire and Corsair 150, and then I could cross this loop, and then the Sion wire goes to the very distal direction to the posterior lateral branch. But anyway, I need to cross this loop, and then I advance the Corsair to this loop and remove the CO wire and make a tip injection. So there's a severe bend to the uh, proximal RCA direction. There's another bend here. 
So first wire comes to this way. So the problem is uh, to come up to this, this RCA, uh, Sion could not go in. So pick up this part, I use Suo03, and also XTR. This wire could come to here, but when I rotate, the tip was props. So the, finally, I use the uh, field wire which has a thicker wire than other 0, 0 and XTR. So the slip coat is uh, good and then I rotate and I could pick up this part. And then uh, go down and it is stretched out and this is the PD. And then other ones are Corsair and I made a tip injection here so uh, there is another switch back curve here. So I tried to cross this bend by XTR, but I could not go in. So I bring back the field again, and then uh, next I brought the Sasuke. This is Sasuke tip injection. So the Sasuke tip is here, and then there's also the tight stenosis at here. So, and then bring the Sasuke here and uh, start with the XTR to pick up because of the stenosis. But I cannot rotate the tip of the XTR. Tip sticks the stick, there's some ki kind of the uh, stenosis. And then uh, finally I change to Sion Black. I could rotate uh, the tip direction and then I could go into the proximal RCA part. So and then I exchange to the Sasuke to Corsair again. And this is the tip injection of Corsair. This is aerial view. This is aerial view. It's not bad. Almost there. And I started to use Neo3 because of unknown entry and unknown routes. But I could not when go into the CTO part. So I used the uh, Miracle 3, uh, Miracle 6 gram. Uh, like here. I cannot use uh, like a Gaia or something because it's easy to make a perforation here. Maybe uh, the ball tip wire is safer than a uh, taper tip wire. So the aerial view looks fine, but when you check the aerial view, uh, two wires far, about one centimeter. And then advance more, so the Six gram comes to completely different place to the anti wire. And I remove the wire and then check the contrast injection again, maybe some kind of perforation here. So uh, I advanced the anti wire again to aim the red grid wire, but UB3 goes to like very far from red grid wire. So, uh, I did a red grade approach, a failure and anti grade approach, and go back and forth. The procedure was stuck. I manipulated the anti grade wire, but did not get close to the red grade wire. I, the red grade wire, did not get close to the anti grade wire. So, like here, so I did not reach the distal room, and so we cannot choose the uh, cross post system. So, only one is a uh, I was guiding or something, or parallel wiring, but not uh, can do the parallel wiring because both wires may be outside of the artery. So I uh, bring the uh, I was into the CTO site. I dilate the uh, CTO part, it's one millimeter balloon, and bring in the I was. So uh, this I was root is almost outside of the vessel. So the wire at the beginning of the outside, so when you rotate, it's large movement here. So, and then uh, I checked the uh, entry point again. Uh, like this condition is anti wire extra, little wire is unknown. So when I checked the IVAS point and then try to trace the another wire, 
just to check in like a calcium by the proto and gently advancing. But this part is unknown procedure. And when the wire tip is getting close to the distal RC part, I think it's almost there. The second wire got close to the distal true lumen. This LAO and audio view. And then uh, the part is difficult to cross. I exchanged the wire to Gaia Sal because of only the penetration. But here, uh, this is a, a, like a target line is here. This is the Dr. Okamura mentioned the 3D wiring. When we see the uh, like LAO view here, uh, next, when you go to the audio view, you can see the audio view. So the wire is a uh, uh, posterior to the target line and tip is uh, uh, forward to uh, anterior. So this kind of position is uh, shaft is posterior, tip face to the anterior. So when you go to the audio view, so shaft is posterior, tip facing to the anterior. So uh, the, when you penetrate here, you can rotate the clockwise rotation. So this is like a 3D wiring, uh, uh, Dr. Okamura uh, showing always. Anyway, but the, still the part is very hard. So Gaia Sado slipped. Uh, it's a difficult to pick up the, this uh, true lumen. So I tried uh, uh, several times, several uh, minutes, uh, spent Gaia side and next side, but uh, almost overlapping, but it's not clearly close there. And then I exchanged to the uh, Conquest Pro 12. So the, for the 3D wiring, finally, I can penetrate this hard part to pick up the distal true lumen. And then I advance the Corsair, and then I bring down the Sion wire to the PDR tree and dial it here. Okay, this is a route. Okay, the proximal, uh, the wire is the inside of the artery and inside the plaque. And this part, the wire root is the edge of the vessel. So in the middle side, I think this is the artery. And this is almost the inside of the uh, artery, maybe dilatable part. And here, this cell is a uh, plaque is here, uh, almost inside of the artery. But this kind of area is unclear. So this case has very torturous uh, collateral channel I did not use the loop wire position because I could pick up the pediatry. So I want to remove the uh, quarter channel uh, Corsair because of if we use the loop wire position, it's risky to break this artery. Anyway, uh, no perforation here. And then I deployed the uh, 3.033 millimeter stent. Uh, after that, I want to pick up this osteoma RCA. Just bring back the uh, amplus guiding uh, to check the osteal position. But uh, finally, I lost the whole system out. So I re-engaged the uh, amplus again. And then uh, I used the XTR, so knock wire ring, because to avoid pick up the stent strut. So the wire, they easily go down to the distal PD artery. And I tried to confirm the IVAS, but IVAS did not cross. And balloon did not cross either. So I thought the wire pick up the strut again. So I bring the uh, Sasuke again, and then to make another knuckle wire go down. And when I check this part by IVAS, so now the wire is a pick up the stand inside part, this one part. So bring down the uh, guide extension and then deploy the, another stand at the proximal. So uh, after deploy the stand, 
I checked the angio, so I had the perforation on this part. Maybe the uh, fast wiring uh, made the perforation on this part. So this is extravasation on this part. So I use the perfusion balloon 3.015 here. And then uh, I got the successful hemostasis here. So the CTO part is all fixed with the stent. And this cell part is uh, like a diffuse disease. So I decided to use a DCB. So I bring down the uh, guide extension to very distal RCA and deliver the 2.020 uh, sequence breeze and this fast and the proximal part again to bring back the sequence breeze and this is almost a final good so and then uh, when I check the IVAS again so this part got the stent deformation here the uh, stent strut is free from the wall and this is the uh, some strut here the center of the artery has a strut here and some other strut here. So uh, I put another stent inside of the uh, deformed stent position and uh, another stent deployment here. So the stent is uh, fixed by the double stent. And finally, I check this uh, ostium at the uh, black dissection. But this part is, uh, almost stabilized by the stent edge. So I left this uh, part without stent, maybe this area. So there's so many problems in this case. Uh, one, the untreated wire made a perforation, even entry point was checked by IVAS. Uh, Retreated wiring was difficult to make a hairpin curve. I think in this kind of situation, use Sasuke, and bring the second wire through here. So you can get a uh, better backup from here, not from uh, like a, to bring down the wire is difficult. The third, uh, literally six gram wire made a perforation, which was not serious because uh, it's uh, automatically hemostasis, uh, just lucky. So anti grade wire and retro wire did not meet together. I was revealed anti grade wire was outside of the vessel and then try to come back to the uh, plug part again. And successful rewiring to the vessel and 3D wiring to pick up distal trumen with finally uh, we use a Conquest Pro 12. So the air one guiding pull back to the Austral RCA after successful fast drug irritant stent deployment. So this maneuver made a collapse of the system. That was my mistake. Uh, I should have changed to grand some wire. When you need a float in position by amplats, guiding requires high support wire or loop wire position. But this time I didn't want to keep the loop wire position. So eight, coronary perforation by integrated wiring was sealed by perfusion balloon. So, and then the regrossing stand by knuckle wire technique, but pick up some strut, which was formed by IVAS, and also need another stand at the deformed strut part. And finally, RC awesome dissection was occurred by Ampart's guiding. So this is a very long day, the procedure time 5.5 hours, the total contrast used was 175, the radiation dose was four gray. So this 10 months follow up. So the stent was patent here, and but I lost the RV branch, but RV is uh, collateralized from left system. So this distal part is DCB part, it's not bad. This is a epicranial double stent, uh, DCB part. Uh, stent is fine, the dissected ostium is almost fine. So the summary of the case, it requires many troubleshooting techniques to finalize the procedure. I was confirmation takes time, but you can know what happened inside of the vessel. Thank you for your attention.
thank you very much, Nakamura Sensei. And congratulations for your really tough case. So I, I have some uh, questions. Yes. So, uh, so retrospectively, uh, in this case, uh, would you recommend us to do the, the CT before the, the procedure mm -hmm. if, if we have a case like this? Yeah, yeah, I think it's better to use a CT. And, but the, the uh, entrance confirmation by IVAS is not, not perfect. I think that at the beginning, the wire is, goes to near the edge of the artery. And, and for, for the IVAS sky of re entry, uh, as uh, I know uh, from the Japanese uh, CTO uh, registry, uh, we, we we could not find the proximal entry by uh, I was in about a ten percent, and mm -hmm. uh, the 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 cost is by the, the calcium at the CTO entry, right? Is that right? Uh, so yeah, if if there's a calcium, it's difficult to check by IVAS because we cannot see behind the calcium. So if but if uh, maybe then not necessary but some cases are like uh, uh, important so we we have our estimation that sometimes wrong so entry point is a different part so to confirm the IVAS is a uh, uh, much uh, secure uh, to the beginning of the procedure and, uh, and uh, another question so in, in this case uh, you you chose a uh, cross micro catheter yeah. and I'm sorry yeah Car you you, so, you, yes, yeah. you select a cross cell micro catheter yes in, in the uh, epicardial channel so and and i i heard some doctor uh, didn't recommend a uh, cross in the epicardial channel because uh, mm -hmm. it it could not uh, expand much mm -hmm. and uh, there's some risk for for the uh, perforation but uh, in, in this case you can use the cross and also the sasicate or, or, or it depends on the vessel, or on the uh, diameter of the the epithelial collateral. Or do, yeah. do you have any ad advice on this? So I think this case was a looped channel, so it's a difficult to just the pushing the uh, microcatheter. And uh, the other thing, this uh, channel size is relatively like uh, 1.5. I think uh, the crossable channel by using the uh, Corsair standard Corsair. So I think uh, in the epical the channel, uh, I want to use the Corsair excess when the channel is small. And then uh, if the advanced Sasuke is, if the supportive wire there like a fielder, I think uh, uh, you can advance the uh, Sasuke uh, through the supportive wire. Maybe the uh, 003 with the proximal part is very uh, supportive. I think if the lumen is uh, large enough, you can advance. Is, is there any other question from the panelists? Uh, yes, uh, may I ask some questions? Yes. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Nakamura, uh, congratulations for your very nice case and very interesting one. Uh, first, my first questions are, for the epicardial collaterals, and this is a major collateral for this case. Do you afraid of uh, ischemia during you go with a guide wire and also the microcatheters? Because the top, uh, the channel is very tortuous. Sometimes you can block these channels with the guide wire and the mm -hmm. uh, microcatheters and create some ischemia. Mm -hmm. uh, what What do you think about this one? Yeah, so the, the large collateral channel is sometimes the risky of the ischemia. But uh, uh, the other thing is uh, easy to cross the uh, large channel. So the, usually I use like a, like a, a promising channel first. And if you uh, complain the ischemia uh, during the procedure, I put back the uh, uh, microcatheter and try to the another way. But another way is usually small, it takes a time. So just to start the pick up large yeah. one, if you get the ischemia change another way. Yes. 
And the second questions are, you have the perforation uh, at the proximal site, uh, proximal uh, CTO site. Yeah. Uh, but you confirm already with the IWAS that your guideway is in the lumen. So what what is the mechanism or what yeah. what's happened that you think this is to create the, that perforation in that case? Uh, yeah, this is an, an unknown, but maybe the uh, reason, because the proximal part is not completely outside the artery. So I think that part is almost uh, uh, inside. So the reason is that maybe the first, maybe the uh, perforation lumen was uh, remained. So that is expanded. Yeah. And maybe the third one are uh, in the very long, long CTO lesions and we we don't know exactly where is the the channels or the root of the arteries. Mm -hmm. CTA already, Dr. Mepet um, mentioned, may, may have benefit uh, for this one. But what do you think about if we have this kind of case, little grade, knuckle wine at the beginning, when you, when you reach the distal part and then do mm -hmm. with the little grade, knuckle, mm -hmm. and then after that, puncture inside with the anti -grade. That's maybe a, a good strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. But the problem is that uh, first puncture should be inside of the artery. Mm -hmm. So if the edge of the CTO part is hard, uh, start with the hard wire. So beginning is I uh, make a perforation. Uh, it's a uh, risky to advance the knuckle wire. If you uh, judge the wire position inside the artery, you can do the neck wire. That is uh, quicker than this kind of procedure. Okay. And uh, in, in this case, uh, if uh, the 3D wiring uh, was not uh, successful, uh, do we have uh, another option? Like uh, we can do a reverse cut there mm -hmm. because the, the the wire is getting close now, mm -hmm. the, the anti-fade wire and the retrograde wire. Yeah, but uh, the problem is uh, like uh, proximal root is unknown. <laughs> yeah, so maybe you can do the like uh, both way. So the other thing is that uh, this patient has that large large collateral channel. You can bring the uh, like a two point zero balloon through the collateral channel to the retrograde, and then uh, you can puncture the retrograde balloon position. Maybe uh, this. Uh, easier to control the wire tip. To do the retrograde wire control is uh, maybe difficult because of tortuosity. Maybe another question. Uh, in this case, you, you begin to puncture the distal side of the CTO with the UB3, mm -hmm. yes? So what is your strategy or what is your uh, guide wire of choice for the retrograde? For retrograde, Channels, uh, retrograde in inside the CTO to to so retrograde to, wire. I think canalization. Yeah, so the not the tapered wire because of the unknown. So I hope the uh, standard ball tip wire. So maybe a uh, 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 coating wire like uh, recently a gradius. Gradius is maybe good because the rest resistance and then uh, three gram tip roll. So uh, anyway, start with uh, without the uh, tapered wire because I want to stay inside of the artery. Okay. Thank thank you very much. And uh, we we can have a Q and A, and again at at, at the end of the con conference. And uh, so now may I move to the next uh, lecture. Uh, Next is, uh, is a case presentation from uh, Dr. Anek uh, Ganoxin. Dr. Anek Ganoxin is the hospital director of the Central Chase Institute of Thailand. So Dr. Anek, please. Uh, Dr. Anek, you can uh, start your presentation. Okay. Can I? Can I?
Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Munpet, Dr. Vasan, and Dr. Nangamula, and all panelists and the audience. I am Dr. Anekanoxin from Central Chess Institute of Thailand. Today, I would like to share my cases. The topic, the title is uh, Again and Again. Let me start with uh, the patient history. A, 74, a 72 years old man, underlying disease with uh, dyslipidemia, and he presented with a uh, second episode of non stemi this time. And this case is a known case of triple vessel disease. And let me state that post PCI from private hospital. It's about uh, four years ago. And at that time, the echo showed good LV systolic function. And the plot history is uh, the patient was uh, the, the VCI was performed at the RCA 95% uh, stenos, stenosis at the mid portion and total occluded of the RCA and VCI with. Uh, Three dilating stent, two point five, two point seven five, and three O, and then state PCI to the uh, left main, left main LID with one dilating stent, T point five, and over to the circumfect. So the this is a summary of the the previous history is uh, the first episode of non stemi PCI was performed to the RCA with three duct eluting stent about four years ago and state PCI to the left main LED with one duct eluting stent. And this time he presented with a uh, second episode of not semi again. And this is a Lee uh, Cori angiogram. The left size angiogram showed the, the good patency of the left main LED stent, but have the collateral from the LED to RCA And this is uh, RCA Korean angiogram. Uh, I am sorry for the image quality is not so good because of this is uh, the cine was done from the private hospital. So uh, we show that the diffuse in stainless stenosis from the mid portion of the RCA and fans contrast field into the bifurcation of the distal RCA to the PL and PDA branch. So at the time, I tried to do ad hoc PCI for the ISRC RCA using a five cross with a UV3, but the Gaiwai did not cross. So I changed to the Gaia first, and the Gaia first was successfully crossed. But it's uh, the tip of the guy wire crossed to the PDA branch. And then uh, I use a small balloon 1.25 by 10 pedalate along the uh, ISR and CTO. And this is the angiogram immediate after small balloon pedalation. It showed that the PL branches will disappear. So, we, I attempt to wiring to the PL branch. After several uh, minutes of attempt, is not success to is not success to cross the PL branch. So at that time we don't have uh, imaging. I, I was available at the that hospital, so I just did the poor bar with NC balloon two point seven five. At the ISR RCA from distal to proximal uh, to mid portion. And then this is the final angiogram. After we did the proba, the angel, the PR balance was coming again. And summary for the, the, at that time, the, the second episode of non steamy. We did early angiogram, 
LED lipid stain is still patent and have a 90% ISR at the mid to distal RCA and total occluded at the distal RCA and receives collateral from the LED. And I was uh, did an ad hoc PCI to the CTO RCA. Just only really successful cause a PDA, but not a PL branch. So I just only pull bar at the ISR with the NC value 2.75. And we, uh, I schedule for LACAG next month. So uh, I refer to the patient to, to Central Chess Institute and to use IWAT guided PCI. And this is uh, three months after the, uh, the NSTEMI. This is a control angiogram from the left side. Left main LED stem still patent. And this has a collateral from the LED to the PDA and PL brand again. And this is an angiogram from the RCA. It looked like the, the distal RCA have uh, serious critical stenosis at the distal portion of RCA bifurcation and faint contrast into the PL and PDA branch. So may I ask uh, panelists about the, what is uh, your strategy? You can we have uh, any uh, discussion at this time before I proceed. Okay, so can I have a uh, point of view from, uh, from uh, Dr. Wasan first? Open the mic, please, Doctor. So how long uh, after the procedure that you send the patients to Central Chess? Uh, three months. Three months already. Yes. So three months, uh, the possibility is maybe pre stenosis because you did only the POBA at the distal part. But maybe I'm not quite sure that when you pass the Y at the first time and the PL, you cannot see. That's yes. maybe because of the collaterals from the left side is uh, more is more than the anti-grade flow. Then when you do the pole bar and you create a good flow to the distal part, then it's okay. But uh, for this one, the re stenosis it looks like very hazy at the distal part. I don't know what, what is that. Maybe there is something inside the artery or maybe <laughs> dislodge stand before, I, I don't know, <laughs> I guess. But there must be something that explains uh, what's happened distal to the stain? Maybe with the IWAS, you you have the answer. Thank you. And may I have uh, the prior view from uh, the camera agency? So, but, but I don't know, but uh, just start to print down why and then check the IWAS. Yeah. Uh -huh. Same. Okay, thank you. So, number eight, please. So at that time, I suspected that the distal portion of the stem was pressed into the sub space. Yeah. And I plan to use a retrograde approach and using a I was guided PCI in this case. So at this time, I started with a retrograde effort approach from the website using a Xiong and Color Wheels 150. And the guy wise can run into the subtle collateral channel and cross to the distal portion of the RCA, uh, the RCA bifurcation. Not so difficult. And this is the angiogram. Uh, the guy wise, the on y was stuck at the at the point of uh, critical stenosis here, but uh, you can appreciate that the the guy is uh, not inside the stand lumen. So at this uh, uh, the, the magnification features, you can see that the, the guy was outside of the stand lumen. Here, this is a stand lumen. 
So I try to advance the uh, color wheel, but it is not, cannot, not possible. So I use a small balloon one O to the septal channel and then uh, advance the uh, color wheels cause uh, to the collateral channels and then uh, change to Gaia Y to the Gaia first and Gaia second is still could not cross this uh, vision. So I switch to Conquest Po and, and uh, exchange the color wheel to the five cost 150. And after that, the, the Conquest Po can, can uh, could pass the, the point of uh, uh, the CTO point and get into the, the stellar lumen. After that, I advanced the uh, Microcatheter cause to the, the stellar lumen. And use a uh, RGT for externalization. And after that, I pedaled with uh, Sapphire 2.1.5 and followed by Tatsuna Balloon 2.5. And this is uh, the stent lumen here, but the balloon outside the stent here. And uh, shake with the iOS. They are very sure that the, uh, the Y in this two lumen, and on the lateral is have some uh, hazinet here. And also have uh, the stellar lumen uh, is around here, and this is a uh, uh, the iOS Pro. And then uh, this is a calcium, and this is uh, the true lumen of the stent, and this uh, iOS is coming into inside the stent here. And we realized that the distal as is very big. It's about 3.5 to up to four millimeter. And this is a, a the I was again. I will show you that uh, this is a PL branch, and this is a I was a probe, and this is a stand as uh, uh, the distal portion of the stand here. And this is uh, this outside here, the uh, IWAT probe. And then uh, the IWAT is coming to into the two room in here. Then I, after that, I put the 2.5 by 24 millimeter uh, stand just uh, before the bifurcation. And then uh, second stand, a 3O by 30. And this is uh, the angel camps. So uh, in the conclusion, uh, I used the two dark, new two dark eluting stand and crush the previous stand at the distal portion here and press the new stand up to the mid portion of uh, RCA and using NC balloon 3O post dilatation and check with the left size. The collateral is now is becoming less and less, just only fence collateral to the PDA. And total die is about 270 and full road time is a, a 94 minute, minute. And this is a surveillance angiogram after three months of the deck procedure. Is uh, the RCA stand is a quite uh, is good potency and the PL band is uh, quite a uh, really big. This is another wheel. So in the conclusion, the long term outcome of subintimal angioplasty has not been determined. The Michelin occlusive ISR after successful stand implantation may be caused by subintimal stenting. And 
I demo we demonstrated successfully treat with bypass stenting across the start of occluded subintimal stent using a retrograde approach. And follow up angiogram demonstrate the patency of the RCE. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Anik. It's very interesting case. Uh, may, may, may I ask you uh, some question? Uh, if the retrograde wire uh, uh, came in, into the, the, the previous lumen of the, the, the stain initially and, and uh, went out in, in the side of, of the stain or is, is, is uh, passed into in, in is 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 passed or outside of the stain uh, from the initial. Uh, I I guess that uh, the distal portion of the stain is uh, all outside the two lumen. So the the, the you know little is uh, uh, was a pass from the uh, uh, distal RCA just uh, stuck in the mid portion of the stain, not cross the two lumen of the stain. So, so like uh, it's crossed into the the stain lumen and and went outside and and we, and uh, when in con connect with the uh, this not RCA like that. No, no, just uh, the guy wire just crossed to the mid portion of the stain, not not the from the distal. So oh. the, the the distal portion of stain is uh, all in the subintimal space. I see. I see. Yeah. Yes, I, I also have uh, some uh, experience with this kind of the sub-intimal uh, stenting before. Uh, if the sub-intimal part of the stent uh, is not very really long and the proximal and distal uh, part of the stent is in the true lumen, sometimes it's okay. In the long term, you, you may not have the re -stenosis. But in this case, like you have the proximal part in the true lumen, but the distal part uh, is in the subintimal space, and you create some dissection, yeah, to get into the true lumen after finish the case. Then you have the re -stenosis. I also have uh, one case like this, that uh, after two three months only, uh, re -stenosis in the RCA stain as well, and the collateral is coming from the uh, left side, and then the collateral is in outside the stem. We, then we, we can tell definitely that this is in the sub space here. The part of the sub space, we should have a uh, very less, uh, very just only short distance, and the proximal and the distal must be in the true room, and that, then you are okay. Do you have uh, any idea to share us, uh, Nakamura Sensei? Okay, thank you. So it's uh, difficult to imagine the first stent was in the fourth room. So this is the most difficult point because we believe stent is inside of the room and basically so, so very sharp to find out this kind of problem. I found many cases of the CTO of the, the distal bifurcation RCA. Many cases uh, stand cross from the two rumen to the, uh, from the subintimal to the two rumen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we stand cross over for the bifurcation, one sideband has gone. So it's quite very common in, in this point, at this point of the CTO vision. Nice. Dr. Anik, uh, congratulations. It's a very difficult case. I'm just wondering, after the first PCI, you would have known immediately. Because if you went from true, false, true, there will be patent stent. But you have, you know, stented into the sub-intimal space from the start. There wouldn't be flow at the end. You know? So I'm just wondering. And even I, at the beginning, you know, we'd have gone anti-grade, maybe with a dual lumen catheter. If you didn't identify this, we would have failed to do this case from anti-grade. I think it's a very difficult case. Congratulations. In this case, uh, the, as the first time, it's not my, uh, my case. I didn't did the... Uh, yes, I, I know, Dr. Nick. You are very good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Viraj, do you have uh, any uh, comment? Uh, yes, I, I I think that this is a very good uh, case to demonstrate the uh, difficulty of the uh, PCI to the CTO of the digital RCA that include the bifurcation. Since this part is uh, one of the uh, most difficult uh, CTO region, uh, and uh, the mistake we always found is that the uh, subintima dissection across the bifurcation. And one of the hints is that uh, when once you cross the bifurcation, you cannot uh, pass the wire to another another branch that is a, a crew. And, and sometimes we can see the flap clearly after standing, but sometimes in this case, it's quite difficult to see. But Dr. Wasan's uh, eye is a quite uh, excellent, you can see some <laughs> uh, haziness after that. That is also a crew. It's a very good case. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I think we, we are uh, on, on the schedule and uh, I think uh, if, if there is no, uh, no question, uh, we can move to uh, another uh, lecture. Uh, so next, next is a case uh, presentation and uh, sorry. from uh, our uh, Malaysian colleague, uh, Dr. Asli Langa Abdullah from uh, Hospital Serdang, Ma Malaysia. Uh, so you can you can start your presentation now, uh, Dr. Abdullah. Okay, thank you. I'll share my screen now. Can, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, hi. Thank, thanks to Asahi and also my Thai counterparts for letting me present. This is a CTO, my teaching case. I'm from a public hospital in Sedang. We do about 3,500 PCIs per year. And um, we have three cat labs. And uh, this is a new block coming up with another six cat labs. Hopefully, it'll be, it'll be ready by end of next year. And... Uh, before I start my presentation, I'd like to pay my respects to Dr. Wasan, who's been my mentor and uh, he's been my CTO guide for many years. He's come here to teach us CTO and teach me for many years. And also Dr. Viraj and Dr. Ane, who are excellent CTO operators. Mine is a rather simpler case, which I thought I learned something. It's a 43-year-old lady with the uh, prior risk factors of uh, myocardial infarction and obesity. Uh, she presented with actually acute heart failure and non STEMI to my center. And uh, she has no CKD. Her ejection fraction is good, 52%. She under underwent angio initially with two vessel disease. And uh, she had successful PCI done to the LAD. And the operator attempted to do the CERC CTO, but he failed. So she was referred to me for repeat PCI to the CERC CTO. And, uh, okay, I will show you uh, this first. So we did a double puncture, seven French guide. Uh, and then we we looked at the uh, the collapse. Sorry, the pictures are not so clear. But uh, basically, from RC, the, the the target lesion is in the circumflex. It is uh, from the mid part of the circumflex right to the distal. And uh, what we noted was there's not much of collaterals coming from the right side. The collaterals were actually coming from ipsilaterally from the LAD. So the initial attempt was also uh, done uh, anti-grade, which failed. And uh, so the, what we did is bilateral puncture. We actually prepared to go in with the eight French uh, guide to the right. But unfortunately, after puncturing uh, with the eight French sheet, we found that we didn't have an eight French uh, EBU. So we used a seven French EBU 3.5. Uh, we used a Corsair microcreditor. And initially, we used a Sean Blue. Uh, so what we did was we tried. Uh, so JCTO score for this was the entry point was blunt. And uh, there's no calcification we could see. There was no bending. The length was uh, at least more than 20 millimeters and there was a retrial, so it's at least uh, in, uh, three. So initially we tried with uh, a fine cross microcatheter and we tried with the field XDA, whether we could cross or we could not. And seeing that the previous operator also failed, we actually tried to use, uh, at that point is when we actually first got our um, 
I'll show you a cross boss. So we thought maybe we can use a cross boss to cross and uh, try ADR. But then the cross boss was getting stuck here. We could not proceed further. When we thought uh, whether there was any calcium there, we could not see. So then we actually went back again, uh, trying integrate um, with the Jose microcatheter. And after multiple attempts, uh, we finally managed to go into one of the branches. We had to switch from an XTA to a Gaia 2 wire. But what we found was uh, subsequently we had trouble going into the, the other, the main branch of the circumflex. We couldn't direct the wire down. We actually tried the dual lumen catheter. We brought it down, but again, the dual lumen catheter got stuck at the same place the cross boss got stuck. So we were thinking whether there was calcium and uh, we were a bit uh, wondering what to do with this because there's no collaterals coming from the, uh, from the right side. So second wire also couldn't go down uh, to the second flex and it, despite dual lumen, we couldn't uh, wire down. So we actually exchanged with the soft wire, Sion Blue, into the branch we secured. And then what we did was, uh, we were wondering what to do and what to try. And then we realized that there's actually collaterals, as you can see, coming from the LAD. So retrograde is not from the right. So we actually had to do retrograde from the LAD itself. And uh, this is the first time actually I tried a retrograde on, uh, on the same uh, artery using the same uh, catheter. And later on, I'll tell you with the seven French, uh, things were more difficult to do. So here we chose uh, a Corsair, we brought it down uh, with the wire and we actually wired with, a, as you can see, a Sion. We, uh, there were three uh, septals here, but uh, we tried the, uh, the middle one initially, we could not. But then uh, when we tried the, the, the last uh, septal here, we managed to actually come down with the Sion and Corsair. And we could actually bring the Corsair down using the same uh, seven French guiding. So here we managed to uh, bring the wire up, uh, uh, the Sion wire, and uh, bring down the, the Corsair. And uh, here we actually change uh, wires to try to cross to penetrate distally. And uh, initially we actually used multiple wires. We actually escalated, we used Gaia second, Gaia third, even Hornet 14, we couldn't get through. So in the end, what we did is we actually uh, knuckled we use a fielder XTR and we push the knuckle up. So the knuckle managed to come up and actually it was overriding, uh, overlapping with the first uh, wire we saw. So we decided uh, we did retrograde knuckle and we actually did, uh, we plan to do a reverse cut and see whether we can actually puncture through. We use a 2.515 at low pressure. And uh, initially after a few wires, uh, we actually managed to cross uh, with the Sion Black and uh, Sion Black managed to get through. And uh, we were able to cross the lesion uh, with so much uh, pushing and so on with the Corsair and rotation. Uh, we have overcome the initial resistance there. But after this, our second problem started. Uh, we wanted to externalize with the uh, RG3 wire, but the RG3 wire actually got stuck because we were using the same guiding. Uh, of, uh, of course, on hindsight, we could have brought a second guiding in uh, and used like a ping pong guide. So we thought we will still persist uh, with, uh, with what uh, we're trying to use a single guide. And I remember Dr. Wasan teaching us the Siam Rendu technique and so on in the past. So what we did is we, I, what, I wanted to change this retrograde system into an integrate system. So what I did was actually we brought in a a fine cross catheter and uh, with here you can see the the micro catheter fine cross so actually we managed to get the RG3 into the uh, fine cross system and we actually uh, managed to push down uh, uh, the fine cross catheter in and as we did that we crossed the CTO lesion then we actually pulled out the RG3 so in essence I converted this into an integrate system again uh, and then we brought in a soft wire, Sion Blue into the fine cross and we crossed the lesion. So we proceeded to do the case as though we will do an anti-grid CTO. We pre-dilated with a 2.5. We actually put in, uh, I think a 2.7538, the stand. And these are the shots. So it's a synergy, sorry, 2.538. 
So we completed the PCI across with the patent, the middle large OM was patent. So basically we managed to do uh, ipsilateral retrograde CTO with a single seven French guide. Uh, just needed to maneuver a bit instead of, uh, we could have actually brought a ping pong guide. If it was eight French, it would have been much easier. So I learned a few tips and uh, tricks and try to use what, uh, you know, my previous mentors like Dr. Wasan has taught me. Thank you. And this is my new center. Hopefully, end of next year, it'll be up and running. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdullah. And congratulations for your nice case. Yeah. I, I have one uh, question. So uh, you you did the uh, retrograde knuckle. Yes. Right. And uh, yes. which which part uh, did did you do the 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 uh, reverse cut? I mean, uh, if uh, because uh, usually the the knuckle right go uh, subintimally. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, there is a modification there. So um, I, yeah. I'm not sure if if uh, we go subintimally in in the in the LCX, and uh, yeah. af af after that, uh, we, we lost the the OM branch that uh, we initially wired. If if we are put the stem. Yeah, I, I I think you have a point there. Actually, we tried without knuckling uh, with multiple wires and so on for a long time, and in the end, uh, I think the knuckle was the last resort, and I believe the knuckle actually went into the true lumen. So it's like knuckling the true lumen, and we managed to uh, preserve the, the the branch. So we thought that uh, if initially after uh, wiring, if we had uh, any other problems, we'd have brought in a dual lumen and rewire the OM branch again. I see. I see. I, I, I see your point. Thank you. Uh, any comment from Dr. Nakamura? So maybe, so this is like uh, uh, Ipsilateral Colateral, is it? some yeah, kind of yeah. difficulties. Uh, I think uh, recently I prefer to use a double guiding when you use this kind of situation because you had another uh, access route. You can rotate the <laughs> guiding. Yeah, 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 you're right. Kamura, you're right. Yeah. Yes, uh, may I have some comments? <laughs> your, first of all, congratulations, Ashley. <laughs> Maybe you can do more uh, CT, difficult CTO than me now. <laughs> okay. Uh, first, I think your first wire into the OM, maybe you you go sub intimal and then go to the true lumen. That's why you cannot go from that after the balloon dilatation to the distal part of the circumflex. I think that's the case. Uh, and second, when you retrograde, from the o, uh, the circumflex into the OM, you you will see one time that your guide wire, your guide wire, little great guide wire is go into the OM branch, but in the angle of like reverse angle, so that's maybe another sign that your your first channel is in the false lumen, and then when you do the knuckle, and and then dilate maybe the true and the false lumen is come together. And then after that, then that's why you, you can have, still have a open in the branch and also in, in the circumflex after you do this kissing balloon or some kind of the balloon dilatation. So, so first maybe you, you have sub intimal and then go into the true lumen in into the OM, that yeah. may explain everything that you face. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I learned a lot from Dr. Wasan eh, for the benefit of the rest. He taught me a lot. Thank you. <laughs> and any comment from, from uh, Dr. Anik or Dr. Dr. Vibash? Uh, congratulations for uh, night case, case and uh, did you use uh, the IWAS guided in, in this case? Actually, uh, we did not use IWAS because at that time we had some problem with our IWAS, so we couldn't have uh, we couldn't use imaging at that time. You're right. Yeah. 
I was would have helped us a lot. Maybe it helps, yes. I think because of you can uh, maybe identify the two or false lumen in this case and the side of the same. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations to this case too. Yeah. Uh, I actually, when you realize that the right uh, quarry did not give any collateral to the left, then uh, you can change uh, the right uh, quarry uh, system to the other rest quarry system yeah. to, to uh, combine the uh, retrograde and antiquate procedure. Maybe yes. easier to uh, PCI to uh, like a ping pong technique. Yeah, so what happened was after that, she actually developed a coronary spasm. So we <laughs> couldn't use the radial. So we had to, you know, considering whether we need to puncture the other side. And she was actually a very obese patient, which I presented. So uh -huh. that's one of the reasons uh, we did not put a second guide in and we tried with one type. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh... Maybe, maybe another comment. <laughs> so as we, uh, I think this is a very good uh, case to demonstrate how to deal with the CTO. I think for the CTO interventions, uh, we need to have all the equipments and all the techniques that, that you may have uh, learned before. And then you can see when, when you face with the problems, then you can think about how, how to deal with it and how to success in the recanalization of the CTO. Like this time you combine anti-grade, retrograde, Seyang technique, and also maybe knuckle wide, something like that. I think that's very important. You must have uh, enough skill and enough uh, equipment and a good plan to, to do this uh, difficult CTO. Thank you, Dr. Wasan. Thank you. Thank you. So I move to the next lecture. Uh, the next presenter is my uh, close friend, Dr. Kristami Muk from Ramathipedi Hospital. Uh, he's, oh, he's famous for, for the uh, Metacrip intervention, but also he's very good uh, CTO operator. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Kristami, uh, you can start your presentation now. Thank you, Dr. Manfred, for your kind uh, introduction. And I would like to thank you to Asahi Intec for having me today. Uh, my today's case telling is a, is a case that I performed as a, my previous uh, hospital in Pisanulo. Yeah, this is a 77 years old male. He present with non STEMI last year. And uh, uh, his past medical history, including hypertension, dyslipidemia, and smoking. His IV function is, is good at 70, uh, 20% and no original wall motion abnormality. The uh, index NKO can be performed by, by, uh, by the doctor at, the hus uh, at that hospital, which showed the CTO of the circumference and also the CTO of the RCA. And LD has a uh, significant stenosis at the proximal part. Uh, in the point of view, the, the operator uh, send the patient for the CBT and the patient denied to uh, undergo the open heart surgery. The patient what bring back to the cat, uh, the cat lab uh, is four months after the index procedure. And the first PCI was performed at the CTO of the circumflex. Uh, this procedure was performed by my ex boss at the uh, Pistol uh, Rope. He, he is very famous in uh, that region. He do the PCI using the live femoral apple using a seven fan EBU catheter and he can cross the CTO with the first uh, uh, filter XT he could not cross, but uh, finally he could cross the CTO of the second fake with a progate 40 wise. And after that, he can put the one stand uh, to fight uh, 33 millimeter and the second fake with the pole dilatation up to uh, 2.5 with a high pressure balloon. This is the uh, final angiogram of the circumflex. 
in uh, uh, in January this year. Uh, the vision was scheduled for the CTO of RCA when I went to visit him at the Pistol Lock uh, in July this year, around the five, six months after the first procedure. You can see the circumflex then was occluded already and 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 uh, RCA also uh, had a CTO. First, I discussed with the first operator and he would like to go on the procedure and we plan to do the PCI of the circumflex first and then uh, RCA. I use the EBU 4.0 guide catheter. The filler FCY and uh, micro catheter can cause the lesion uh, not so difficult and we do the pre-dilatation with the two over balloon and after that we put the I want in because I want to see what the problem of the, the first time PCI. We saw uh, the uh, I was sure the stent is a little bit underside the vessel side around three o, but he put only two point five stent, maybe from uh, uh, CTO or the vessel uh, underside. And uh, this how to the stent there was a significant part at the digital circumflex. So we put one more stent and a post delay up to three millimeter balloon, uh, three millimeters. In balloon. This is the uh, final angiogram of the circumflex. I was show the good uh, stent acquisition and expansion of the circumflex stent. So we move to uh, CTO of, of the RCA at the same time. You can see the 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 uh, the stem of the uh, CTO RCA. It uh, should be no stem over there. I I I look many. Uh, view and I cannot see obvious thumb down here and you can see the multiple control uh, from the proximal to the digital RCA. This is a still image of the uh, RCA. You can see there was no thumb over here. The J C O score of this patient is three. It's uh, very difficult. The the length of the CTO length, I think more than uh, 20 millimeters. If you look at the, the approach, I use the bilateral injection using seven fan on the right and six fan on the left. And I plan to do the antigen Y escalation, but you see the, the proximal cap is ambiguity. Uh, it's mandatory to use the IWAT guide entry. Yeah. So I use the IWAT guide entry because uh, there is the, uh, I'll be banned at the proximal to the CTO segment. This is a I want learning from the uh, uh, from the RV brand. You can see the, the proximal cap should be around here or here. So I, I confirm with the I want. So I try to use the uh, Y to engage the proximal cap. But after the entry the proximal cap, I could not control the Y to the distal to lumen when I change from the filter to the Gaia and conquest bowl. So I, because the, the cost of the CTO uh, is not so obvious, I don't want to make the perforation to the to the vessel. So I pre, uh, I should to move to a, a retrograde approach. So this is the actual cam of, of the of the lab. You can see multiple uh, septal cholesterol here. First, I try to do the first septal band, but I cannot see the good connection of the uh, septal cholesterol to the RCA. I try to move to the second or third septal band, but I cannot engage that band with the Y. So I move back to the uh, first septal band. I try, I try to use this band because uh, this, this, this one is more likely to connect to the digital RCA. So I use a Corsair Pro 150 CM with the Xiong Y for the surfing. You can see the, the Y can go to the digital RCA and not so difficult. I do the actual cam and confirm the Y is in the digital RCA. So I managed to move the Guy Y to the mid RCA. After that, I tried, uh, I crossed the Corsair to the digital RCA like this and up to the 
uh, mid RCA. So what, what should be the strategy for the crossing of the CTO? Let's look at crossing of using Y technique on the knuckle Y, like the previous operator, or the section VNT technique or reverse class. If you look at the AP CTO craft algorithm, if the lesion less than uh, 15 mm, they recommend to use a direct retrograde Y crossing. Uh, but I think the, the CO segment is uh, a bit long, but not so long, and the cost should be uh, not so uh, touch to us. And I have the proximal wire. I can do the kissing Y also, but I cannot, the retrograde uh, why I cannot go to the proximal uh, RCA? Even I should, I, I change from the Gaia, uh, Gaia second, uh, Conquest Pro or Gaia third. You can see the why I cannot go to the proximal RCA. So I, I prefer for the liver card because uh, the, the Y crossing is over here. I do the rotational imaging and you can see the, uh, the Y crossing around here. So I do the uh, liver card technique by using a uh, uh, Gaia third at the, as an integrate Y and the uh, Xiong back at the retrograde Y. I do the balloon filtration with the 2.5 balloon, low pressure. And after that, you can see the Xiong back uh, I can manage the uh, Xiong back to the uh, proximal RCA. I try to put the Xiong back into the uh, guy Y, but uh, you can see the uh, Xiong back went to uh, the ascending aorta. I use the IO view to facilitate the crossing of the little grade Y to the anti gate guy catheters. You think that tapping balloon technique, I can uh, advance the Corsair to the uh, anti gate guide catheter. What sh should we do next? Externalization and, and, and the lab, we don't have a uh, ITTY. So we try to do a longer wood technique. For the longer wood, I, I use the Xiong Y that we use for the septal crossing and contaminate to put the Xiong Y into the uh, retrograde corsair. And after that, we remove the retrograde corsair and we do the IWAS. Uh, the the I confirmed all the segment of the Y is was in the two lumen. So after we remove the uh, uh, and let's okay, close that we check the septal control is uh, looks okay, no injury of the control vessel. And then we do the pre-dilatation with the 2.5 balloon from the proximal to the distal. And we managed to put the three long stents from the proximal to the distal RCA. This is the NTO cam. We do the I was to confirm. You can see the uh, stent was uh, well expanded and well opposed to the uh, vessel wall. In the summary, in a, I think the entire vessel meeting is the is a mandatory in the CTO PCI because it can be used for prevent uh, before uh, before the stent failure happen and identify after the. Uh, we have the stent failure to identify the mechanical cause of the stent failures, like uh, in circumflex, we, we saw the under expansion and small uh, underside of the stent. And the IWAS guide beside, uh, can be useful to identify entry point in, in the case like this in the uh, cosmo cap ambiguity. And the let's look at approach is essential component for the CTO beside because if you uh, fail the anti gate, you should have the backup like a retro gate for the success of the procedure. And I recommend to use the APC 12 cup that Dr. Mentes is a fellow of uh, that cup. That, I think that algorithm uh, provide very practical as why to overcome the major obstacle of the successful C12 PCI like this case. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Tifsudar. And congratulations for your nice uh, procedure. And uh, uh, could you uh, go back to to the, the picture that uh, you used uh, the I I was uh, guide puncture again, please. Uh, yeah, uh, this one. Uh, thank you. And uh, 
so uh, could, could you go back a one one more slide please one one more slide back please uh the the, the one that the, no uh, the the one with the the ang the ang the angle of of the right oh. correction yes. uh, uh, yeah the, the, this one so uh so uh, in, in in this kind of the the ambiguous thumb, uh, so so you can see that the the cyberan or uh, over there is uh, almost uh, ninety degree to to the 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 west cell. So in in my ex experience, this kind of the cyberan is sometimes uh, difficult to to do the the Iowa sky uh, uh, puncture because uh, it's 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 quite uh, difficult to see uh, clearly the 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 uh, Proximal uh, stamp, uh, com comparing to to the side branch with which is uh, parallel to to the uh, CTO uh, uh, segment or something. Uh, do do you have uh, any uh, any idea, uh, Doctor Kisada yes. uh, and and uh, Doctor Nak Nak Nakamura? But I, I see that this case you you can see the the, the stamp, but in my experience this. This kind of uh, an angle is quite uh, difficult. Yes, most of the time, uh, that's up, up the case like this. I do the uh, uh, sideband technique. I put the double lumen catheter into the sideband and try to uh, dislocate the proximal cap. But in this case, we use the uh, IWAT for the circumflex. So I just want I just want to uh, save the cost for the patient. I just uh, do the IWAT, and luckily I I saw the the entry point. I, I think it's 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 good uh technique to do, but I I, I just share my my experience that uh, sometimes with the anchor like this is it's not easy. Uh, do you have uh, any any comment or Nakamura sensei? Yeah, the conversation with this procedure because this patient is very uh, difficult case. I have a question about the uh the, the patient taking uh, dual antibiotic therapy because the circumflex stent is uh, not so bad, but uh, yeah. completely upgraded. How was the uh, patient? Yeah, he, he confirmed he, he took uh, DAPT all mm -hmm. the time, no, no, no discontinuation by Boy. himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and also, this is uh, like a well collateralized, uh, and the RCA shoulder part is a 90 degree bend, so it's very yeah. difficult. If you don't get the red red approach, I think uh, it's a good way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and uh, Doctor Kisera, could you go go to the the uh, picture that uh, you do the uh, uh, what card? So, no, no, no. The the uh, Chanel crossing. Yeah. So how how is your strategy in the selection of the the septal channel or which one do, do you prefer? Uh, actually, I prefer the this one because the the carotid channel is it uh, short and not so short. But this in this case, I cannot go further this early, and so I had to use this channel. But 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 if I prefer I prefer the short and and. Uh, straight cut out at the like a mid or this house part of the LAD. Yeah, could, could you show us uh, with, without the tip uh, in, injection? The one with, okay. with, uh, uh, oh, yeah. with the angio only? Yeah. First, I, I want to use uh, the, the third one. You can see that look, it looks more straight compared to the first one and I cannot the the the, y, the guy why I could not go there. And uh and, and, and I, I want to ask uh Dr. Nakamura. So in, in the case with uh with the uh, uh septal collateral channel and uh, the the bigger one the the promising one is is uh the only one that uh that uh supplied for the CTO, and the the other one is is just a tiny or or something, but uh, if if we use the the big one, so it we we like a we we like we cut the supply for the the uh, CTO, 
would you prefer the the smaller one? And and we did like a uh serving tap out serving like that. Or you yeah. still prefer the, the the large one? Yeah, I prefer like a large one. So I think we can easy to cross the. We want to uh, shorten the procedure time. So the, the Grisada took a very complex channel. It's so very, very difficult because they going <laughs> yeah. down and then the channel goes to the apical side and then come back is a, sometimes difficult to come back. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Yeah. And, and in this case, uh, Dr. Grisada showed us that uh, from the tip in injection, we, we could not see clearly the, the connection and mm -hmm. he did the septal serving. Do you have uh, any uh, any uh, advice on on the technique to do the the septal serving, which wire, or uh, how how to uh, how to yeah. get the the channel? So the something I think uh, uh, usually we cannot see the channel. We use the XDR, but uh, sometimes crosser. But uh, most of the time we cannot cross uh, easily. So uh, maybe the different uh, strategy, if you spend uh, too much time to soften, is not good. So I, I heard that uh, the, the success rate of the, the septal surfing is, is quite high. It's, it's not so bad, but uh, there is the perforation about, about in the one, one fourth of case, I mean, uh, about uh, 20 to 25%. Mm -hmm. When 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 we do the septal serving, there is a uh, mm -hmm. septal operation, but I, I think it's it's the the way to to do if 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 we don't have uh, other choice. But uh, if 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 we can if we can select the the septal catheter channel, which is uh, more bigger and more promising, maybe uh, more more safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the septal chaff something is uh, some doctor like, but I don't like <laughs> because it takes uh, uh, time and sometimes impossible. So and also the operator tend to be exciting, just uh, starting pushing strongly. So uh, finally make uh, the perforation the quit uh, other try to channel other channel. So I think invisible channel is uh, uh, just for the lucky. Any any comment from Doctor? Yes, uh, yes. I think uh, this is a nice case to demonstrate uh, how to use the retrograde approach. And one one thing in the uh, uh, in the right side of the screen, you can see the LED that gives the collateral circulations. The proximal to the large septal, you see some lesions there. So yeah. if you are the beginner of the retrograde approach, just be careful. If you use this kind of the retrograde approach and then you see some lesion like this, sometimes you may create the ischemia of the RAD during uh, wiring and the microcatheter passing to the collateral channels and you, you may have some ischemia. This is uh, another part of the, the retrograde approach that you must be careful about the parents vessel and you must check the parent vessel after you do the retrograde already yeah. that's an yeah. important part yes just just to add what dr wasan said also sometimes we put in a safety wire in the led just in case you know you have a second wire guide wire down so just in case um, something happens thank you And, and maybe I, I can add another point. Uh, when you have your retrograde Y inside the anti-grade guiding already and you, you want to use the rondo rules, uh, the, uh, the best way to do the rondo rule is uh, do it at the curve, curve of the catheters. So you put the micro catheters and the guide Y at the curve of the catheters. Uh, maybe better if you have an outer curve. <laughs> then yes, the guide wire and the micro catheter will go into the same alignment and then go easily inside the micro catheters. That's another trick 
tips yeah, and tricks. Thank, thank, thank you so much. But in this case, I try to put the calendar uh, more inside, but I cannot go further yeah. because the, the stiffness of the, uh, the channel and I try to push more and it's kick the uh, retrograde guy back. So I have to do it at that point. But, but, but you taught me many times and we should do mm -hmm. at the, the curve of the catheter. Thank you, Dr. Wasan. So thank you very much. If we don't have uh, any further comment, we, we, we will move to uh, the next uh, session. Uh, Presenter will be uh, Dr. Vilas Kehasukjaran from Central Chef Institute of Thailand. And uh, you can you can start now, Dr. Vilas, please. Can you see the slide? Yes, we can see. Okay. Uh, thank you for the uh, invitation and uh, give me a chance to share my uh, CTO case. Uh, my case may be different from another one. Uh, this case, actually, I have a, 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 this case present in somewhere else, but uh, this we will focus on the uh, CTO technique of the case. The case is a 56-year-old female who had underlying diabetes, hypertension, and uh, a year ago, uh, she had anterior wall steamy, and the uh, angiogram was done a couple of months after the steamy revealed the triple vessel uh, coronary artery disease, and she was uh, underwent campus with uh, uh, three graphs uh, to the uh, OM, RI, RCA, and one lima to the LED. And the uh, recurrent angina occur early in this year, about uh, uh, seven months after the surgery. The echo showed that she had the impaired LV function, hypokinesia of anterior wall and lateral wall, with the apical uh, wall hyperkinesia nearly, nearly to be an aneurysm. She had no uh, chronic kidney disease. So the repeated angiogram was performed in uh, March and showed that the failure of the lima uh, the vein graph to the uh, OM. So uh, this is the, uh, oh, sorry, uh, I make an accident. Okay. This is the angiogram show that uh, she had uh, the native uh, artery. Look, uh, total occlusion of the RAD and the uh, Circumflex and the, uh, still have a good flow. The RCA had a severe disease in the proximal part, but the flow still uh, flow to the distal part and have uh, some uh, a backward flow through the uh, vein graph. Uh, as well as the collateral from the RCA itself to the uh, RAD. For the graph, we can see that the uh, Lima was very small and they end up at the anastomosis somewhere, but no any uh, flow into the na native RAD was shown. The vein graph to the circumflex also total occluded at the uh, origin. And the remaining graph is the SVG to the uh, uh, PDA, uh, sorry, the RPL, uh, which uh, have a very good collateral uh, to the uh, central band to RAD. But the LED in this case, we can see that it is a quite a small diffuse artery. And you can appreciate that uh, there are some calcified lesions uh, along the proximal LED as well. We plan the revascularization with the heart team. And uh, because the previous operation uh, operative not reported the LV contraction is marked improved immediately after bypass. So we think that the uh, we can reverse to LED still benefit. Uh, after this cut with the heart team, the patient denied to redo CABG. So we ha uh, have planned to uh, PCI to the left main in the uh, LCX as well as the CTO of the LED. 
But the problem is that in this uh, NGO, we cannot see the uh, opening of the LED. So where is the LED ostium? Uh, what should we do? What should we do to identify the LED ostium? Since the lab man in this case look very tight, and uh, uh, so should we dilate the lab man first? Uh, maybe it can modify the plug geometry, and uh, you can see some os, or you can you try to push an iwas into the proximal of circumflex and pull back to see where is the uh, LED. Or you combine the A and B, dilate the left main first in case that IWAS cannot cross and then put an IWAS later. Or you will try to puncture the, with the slip by and somewhere else to the uh, calcified shadow. Or you think of the retrograde PCI or refer to other expert. So, uh, so Dr. Viraj, can I, I ask uh, the, all, all the panelists' uh, yeah. opinion here at, at, at this point, I guess yes. could you go back uh, to your question again, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, you are you are uh, question. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, can can I ask the panelists' uh, opinion? So, uh, first start with the uh, Nakamura sensei. Very very complex case in the. Ostium LED has a uh, severely calcified, and the entrance is unknown. So, uh, if we can make a retrograde access, I try to uh, find out the retrograde access. So, if it's impossible, uh, just uh, dilate the left main to circumflex and then check the IVAS. But the uh, anti-wave approach is very acute angle, so pretty much difficult to go. So, I think retrograde access is a uh, very much important in this kind of case. Okay, and Dr. Wasak, please. Yes, I, I may have another option. <laughs> because from the angiogram, we cannot see clearly the proximal part on the ostium of the LED. Uh, the best way maybe do like uh, Dr. Nakamura said, uh, dilate the left main, the circumflex, and then do the IWAS to identify the ostium. But maybe another uh, options is you you may have uh, you have already the collaterals from the right uh, to the LED then we can do simultaneous injection from the lima and the right coronary to see about the distal anastomosis of the lima because if the distal anastomosis is very short and maybe you can successful recanalization of the lima and the part of the distal anastomosis of the lima to the LED, if you do uh, PCI, very, very low grade of the restenosis, that may be better than recanalize from the osteo of the LED and put a very long stain in, in, in the LED. That's another, another option. How about Dr. Annie? Please. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to compared to the previous angiogram first before this cabbage to find out the, the load of the LED, which uh, uh, maybe is more easier to, to identify where is the load of the LED first. And then secondly, uh, because of the left man is very, very tight. So uh, maybe we can delete the left man first and use a uh, contralateral mapping from the vein graph from the PDA, give the collateral to the LED. So maybe we can can uh, use this uh, as a collateral channel to, to check the load of the LED. So maybe just uh, delete the left main and, and try to process to, to the cross the ostium LED by using uh, double lumen catheter like the Sasuke. To, uh, the first Y in the circumflex and the second Y maybe the CTO Y to cross the ostium of the LED. Okay. And what is your op op opinion, Dr. Abdullah? 
Hi. I think this is a very, very tough case. And uh, even the calcium is so calcified. And coming from retrograde also, I'm not sure whether it can pass through. But I'll agree with the panic. I will, the other thing is I want to know whether the LED is viable or not. Because if the LED is not viable, you'll just have to stand into the circumflex. You know, you might need a pre-dilatation, rota, and things like that. And come back for the LED. But if it's not viable, we can do that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it's going to be very tough coming from retrograde. And the other options, like what Dr. Uh, Wasan has mentioned, you just uh, open from the Lima into the uh, distal LED. But looking at the previous angel will help. Thank you. So, uh, but if you are sorry, okay, don't take it, sir. Okay. Uh, Dr. Oh, yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I agree with Dr. Nakamura that uh, if we can put uh, the Y to the second pack, I just delay the layman and put the AWAT in and to see uh, where is the osteo of the, the LAD and try to do from the imaging guidance. Uh -huh. okay. okay, thank you. So, Dr. Viraj, please uh, show us what uh, yes. you, you have done. So, in this case, uh, since uh, the uh, this, this case was done in another hospital. So uh, at that time, uh, we reviewed this case and have, I have no idea and I plan to uh, retrograde uh, as well. But uh, before the operation, the, the patient bring back the angiogram before cabbage. So we have a chance to review uh, the angiogram before cabbage. And what can you see in this angiogram is that it's quite luckily that we can see some stump of the LED. And the left vein is quite short in this view. And if the angiogram, uh, the, the lesion is changed uh, not much during the year after cabbage, the, the part of CTO is not quite long. So uh, then we plan to do the antiquate uh, CTO uh, using the uh, Jatkin catheter since we saw that the red main is quite short and use a contralateral mapping from the right quarry. But however, in this uh, time, at the, uh, at the index uh, uh, angiogram, we cannot see clearly the collateral from the right quarry. Uh, however, we proceed to uh, do the uh, puncture using the uh, double lumen uh, catheter, the Sasuke. Uh, put uh, workhorse wire right into the uh, left circumflex, but the workhorse wires cannot go too deep. So it's just uh, reach the uh, mid part of the circumflex and uh, cannot go further. But we can use this uh, for anchoring for the dual lumen catheter. Uh, the first guide wire that I used uh, in the side hole is the filter XT, which is look too soft and uh, it looked like to prolapse after we try to puncture at the uh, stump of the LED. So I changed to uh, the Conquest Pro and the stiffness of the Conquest Pro make the Y have a, a stronger uh, presentation force and could uh, penetrate into the uh, ostium of this LED. However, it's my strategy that I would, I, I don't like to use the Conquest Pro to escalate since it's quite difficult to control. So I plan to change back to the uh, XTY using uh, the color wheel microcalculator to change uh, action with the uh, Sasuke. But the tip of the Conquest Pro that uh, went into the uh, LED is, uh, is too short to support and the system disrupts. So I have to retry with the dual lumen calculator and use a uh, Conquest Pro again. Now uh, we can uh, print the uh, Conquest Pro a bit uh, a, a little bit a little bit uh, deeper into the LED, and then uh, I use the calcified shadow uh, as a, uh, a marker to uh, as to manipulate the Y escalation into the mid uh, LED successfully uh, with this uh, Conquest Pro. But it's, a, it's quite a difficult since the Conquest Pro uh, always stuck with the uh, calcified lesion uh, along the way. But, uh, but uh, lastly, it uh, can successfully go into the mid RED. Then, uh, how to check uh, the distal RED since the collateral from the RCA now is not as good as in the 
uh, angio previously angiogram. So I change uh, the the uh, using the stem guiding catheter uh, the uh, diagnostic catheter chain from the uh, native RCA to the uh, bypass graft of this uh, PDA, and then uh, the angiogram can see some uh, shadow of this uh, little grade. Uh, back to the tip of the concrete floor. Uh, we, we take a look at the another view and confirm that the Y is inside the LED. So I can uh, uh, proceed to manipulate the, uh, LED, uh, the concrete floor into the distal LED. And then uh, uh, exchange the system uh, to the single lumen uh, microcatheter. Uh, use the same uh, caravel uh, and the caravel can post uh, can penetrate it into the RID and follow the cost of the uh, concrete pole wire until it's list the uh, distal RID. Then I did uh, the tip injection to confirm that the tip of uh, microcatheter is inside the uh, distal RID and then uh, change to a uh, workhorse wire, the Xiong Blue. After that, we start to uh, dilate this uh, LED with a small balloon, the 1.5 by uh, 15 uh, Kasuna balloon. And then uh, we can see some uh, anti grade flow come back. But the LED size is quite small. Uh, then I continue to dilate it with a bigger balloon, the 2.5 by 15. But however, uh, some dissection occur after the uh, balloon dilatation. Uh, the pressure I use is just only about 14 atmosphere. So it uh, looks like that is not quite uh, hard. But uh, in some part of the, uh, along the way, we can see that the calcification is quite difficult to dilate. So I uh, perform uh, cutting balloon uh, to open this uh, tough lesion with a Wolverine uh, 3 -0 by 10 millimeter. And then uh, the, it looks like that the, the balloon can open uh, fully. But however, there are some plug chip into, into the uh, osteum of the circumflex. So I have to open the circumflex first with the 2.5 by uh, 15 uh, SC balloon. And then uh, followed by a cutting balloon, the same, the, the same 3 -0 cutting balloon too. However, the uh, this outflow in the LED looks quite uh, poor. So I use the uh, pullback angio via the Sasuke to do a tip injection with the pullback. And I can identify that some uh, lesion uh, after the, the, the uh, what we uh, just deleted with the 2.5 balloon. So I uh, opened it with the 1.5 FC balloon, and that make the flow look better, uh, but still have some competitive flow from the collateral. Uh, then I did uh, more uh, lesion preparation in LED with the uh, 2.5 by 18 uh, MC balloon, uh, and uh, repeated with the Wolverine uh, 3O balloon at the uh, proximal RCA. Now I make a lot of dissection along the way of the RID. But this time the IWAS can uh, go into the RID quite easily. And you can see that the uh, calcified lesion along the way of the uh, proximal RID already opened with the uh, previous balloon. Uh, the yellow uh, angle uh, arrow show that uh, what we can see uh, the circumflex sky wide is just at the ostium of the LED which uh, connect to directly to the uh, aorta as well as the IWAS done from the circumflex. Also, we can identify that the circumflex is a very calcified lesion as well and uh, the present of the uh, guide wire from the LED is at the ostium of the circumflex which also just connected to the aorta. So, by the IWAS, we can confirm that this patient has a separate RID and circumflex osseum without any left main stump. So the problem now is that 
uh, what stent strategy is suitable for this patient? Provisional T, T tapping or curat, but I think curat maybe uh, have no chance. To <laughs> DK crush or uh, V standing or kissing stand, which uh, now quite not not uh, popular and uh, did not recommend by and many uh, consensus all the other technique. I think that uh, the the two stand technique in this case is is many. <clears throat> it's mandatory because we have a, a lot of classified plaque inside both uh, LED and uh, circumflex. But the way to do the complex uh, two stand techniques is not available in case that we have uh, no uh, real uh, main stump. So I choose to do the we stand or kissing stand technique. Now before the uh, put the stand, I perform a kissing balloon with a 2.5 balloon and then put to a 3 -0 uh for 24 uh millimeter with a 3018 millimeter dark stand in uh LED and circumflex and then this is after uh stand implantation you can appreciate that uh, there will there is uh, some uh still some uh incomplete uh dilatation or expansion of the stand at the proximal of the LED however uh why I want to fix the uh, mid LED, uh, there are some problems. Since I already stand the LED osteum, which uh, is a separate osteum to the circumflex, and the guiding is stay outside the these two uh, stand. So the guide wire in the circumflex make it difficult to uh, handle the guiding catheter uh, and make the uh, stand cross. Since it's uh, the stand and the Guiding, the guiding cannot support the stand in. So the way to uh, facilitate that the stand uh, insertion is to use a uh, guide or the extension uh, guiding catheter. I can push the six fan guiding uh, guide sila into the LED and then uh, push uh, another 2.5 by 30 millimeter, millimeter dark irritant stand into the circumflex. And after uh, we deploy the stand in the uh, with LED, I do the kissing balloon. And this is uh, after the kissing balloon dilatation of the uh, this, uh, two stent. The IVAS in LED show that the incomplete stent expansion is caused by the very heavy calcified lesion in the uh, proximal LED. But I think that the, uh, the, the result is uh, acceptable. And the IVAS from the circumflex Look, uh, the stand expansion is better. Uh, this is a quite a final angiogram, but I still feel that the uh, flow to the distal LED is quite uh, poor because of the diffuse disease. So I take a chance to do the some dilatation of the LED with the distal LED with the small balloon, the 1.5 we had, and uh, wait for five minutes that the flow in the LED look better and uh, still a good flow, even we remove the guide wire. So this is the final result of this uh, CTO. And this is another view. You can appreciate that the uh, LED, proximal LED still have uh, some incomplete dilatation of the stent, uh, sorry, incomplete expansion of the stent due to the heavy calcified region. So the procedural summary, we use uh, almost 300 millimeter of the contrast media. The full speed time is uh, 66 minutes and the procedural time is three hours. The total skin dose is quite high, it's uh, 8.9. So this case show the uh, benefit of the total review of the previous angiogram that could guide us to uh, plan uh, some uh, PCI strategy in a uh, complex vision like this. And we can use the double lumen microcatheter uh, as a very helpful device for the PCI of CTO in the ambiguous stand. And the choice of the guide wire to cooperate with the, this uh, catheter is also important to achieve the procedural success. Uh, lesion lip preparation in the complex preparation is quite essential. And the cutting balloon is one of the device of choice in this case because of the separate osseum, the uh, may be quite uh, difficult uh, to do. Uh, 
Uh, and lastly, the same technique for a region on this uh, separate uh, osteo. Uh, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, Thank you very much, Dr. Viraj. Uh, may I ask you uh, one question? Uh, so in, in this case, uh, why why did you decide to put the, the, the left main uh, bifurcation stenting before uh, before uh, uh, putting in the stent in, in the mid hour already? Yeah. So, uh, uh, since uh, why I uh, performed the uh, PCR of the uh, the circumflex. Uh, uh, since I use the uh, jacking right, uh, jacking left catheter, I said many quite difficult to ha handle the catheter during the uh, some uh, insertion of the device into the ostium of the the circumflex as well as the LAD. So uh, so and the because of the uh, this section, if uh, we I have a chance to take a uh, the picture back. You can see that there are a lot of dissection in the ostium of LED into the aorta as well. So at that time, I think that it's better to fix this lesion first. Uh, the other reason is that uh, I did not have any experience about the uh, separate uh, ostium sending. So we, I did not aware of the difficulty to cross a stent uh, into the this uh, kind of stent after uh, uh, stent the first in the ostium of LED, yeah. But if if you think that the LED ostium can be wet, uh, I think the stand to the mid of the LED may be a, a better choice. But you should uh, keep the guiding catheter very very careful. Since if you lost the catheter, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to recross the uh, the, the both vessel again. Thank you. And may I ask? May ask Dr. Anne uh, uh, about your opinion. If you if you were the operator, which uh, what kind of the stent strategy you will choose for for this uh left main certification? Uh, in in this case, uh, from the basic base style angiogram show from the LAO cranial view, show that there are a lot of uh, calcification in the LED. So if uh, we successfully cross the the lesion with the uh, the guy, maybe I will start with the rotor first, and then to, uh, to facilitate to put the stand. And then uh, uh, in this case, because of the I, I in my I I I think the left man is uh, is a very short left man. In this case, it's the, not not exactly the separate ostium, so. In this case, they have no space for for use a uh, bifurcation technique for uh, culot or decay crush. So in this case, I still agree with uh, Dr. Willard to to use a uh, distending. Do, do you have any other uh, idea, Dr. Visida? No, I totally agree with Dr. Willard because uh, you can see that lemon is very short and. We cannot do any bifurcation technique like a pull out uh, DK crush. I think we stand it uh, is the best way to do in this this kind of the case. Okay, and uh, I I want to ask uh, uh, Doctor Wasanek, Doctor Nakamura, uh, in in this kind of of the the, the lesion that we have to do the the anti grade puncture like this. And uh, what what kind of the guy wire and then the micro character selection would you prefer? So anyway, the congratulations. This is a great case of the procedure. So and the also precise judgment I was. Uh, so I think uh, the one thing to initial why is uh, I think I choose the uh, miracle twelve or six round. I think the uh, conquest is very powerful, but uh, sometimes it's. Uh, go outside at the beginning. So I think both tip wire is uh, better to stay inside of the, I mean, uh, uh, much more safety margin than the penetration wire to stay inside of the uh, cosmic region. That's uh, only the, I think. <laughs> yeah. 
It's a great Dr. Day. Dr. Viraj, yes. uh, I'd like to congratulate you. I've seen you work in your lab before, and I think it's a very, very difficult and tough case. But I'm surprised you managed to pull it off without rotablation, like what Anik said. The only problem with rotablation is you have to pull out one wire. So most probably you'll pull out the second wire and rotablate into the LED. But subsequently, when you had a lot of dissections, then it's very difficult. And in these sort of settings, I've done V stenting before. I don't think there's any other technique. If you do any other technique, then it'll be more complicated. V stenting, you maintain both wires and you can do it quickly. The only problem, like what you face, is you should not lose the wires. If you lose the wires in any case and rewire, it'll be you have to do like a classical crush. You have to crush back and so on. So it'll be very difficult. But uh, you know, otherwise it's fantastic. And I think in the future, if you have the lithotripsy balloon, IVL balloon. Yeah, it can really help you to you know to expand that that proximal part. But I think you did like a miracle worker. It's a great case. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I think for for puncture the osteo of the LED, uh, Dr. Virat already shows uh, the best way. This one I think for the double lumen micro catheter. This this is one of the best that that you can use this micro catheters to facilitate the puncture at the osteo of the LED. And also Dr. Virat demonstrated that if we look carefully in, in the previous angiogram, so if you have the previous angiogram before uh, operations and also the previous procedure, please bring all together and you will see something from, from that previous angiogram and that will help, will help us to guide us uh, or the better procedure that we can do. So I think this is the best way to learn and maybe the best way to, to do the CTO procedure, like Dr. Virat demonstrated us. Congratulations, Dr. Virat. Thank you very much. Yes, and uh, yes, and uh, we, we know very well that uh, Dr. Virat is a very careful operator and uh, he he demonstrated us uh, today. Uh, I think it's it's a uh, it's a very good 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 thing that uh, we we should learn to to do uh, like him to uh, to check the angio cam very carefully. And uh, I, I think he demonstrated us that uh, he he try uh, many ways to 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 check for the this how this how to. Uh, this our LED uh, lumen by uh, in injection from the uh, previous uh, from the uh, different uh, route, like uh, from from the graph from the uh, RCA. I think uh, that's, that's a very good thing we, we, we should learn from him. So uh, so I, I I don't see uh, any question from from the the uh, audience now and. Uh, if we if we, if if we don't have uh, any other question or any other comment from from the panelists, uh, I think uh, we we should uh, we should close the the session now because uh, I I know that uh, Dr. Wasanet and Dr. Viraj will have uh, another webinar in the next uh, in the next uh, thirty minutes, so uh, we have to finish on time. So uh, today uh, I would like to to thank all the panelists uh, for your contribution today. Uh, we have learned a lot of the CTO technique from from your case today, and uh, also I would like to thank our Asahi Intech for for uh, supporting this uh, this uh, educational uh, webinar, and uh, for the audience, uh, it would be a uh, very much very much appreciate if you should do the survey for us so we can improve uh, our uh, webinar for, for the next time. So, and uh, today I would like to thank you every everyone and uh, I would like to close the session now. Bye-bye uh, and thank you very much again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye.